usually hear people say oh, it's not quite right for the time slot or for the, we can't see where it fits yeah. in the schedule. How do you advise writers? Do you advise writers to look at the schedules and see what people need, or to just no, write that's just all part of the armoury, isn't it? That's all the right. bullshit. So it is just <laughs> the yeah, yeah, okay. I just forgot <laughs> that. people in. I just realised that the controller likes to be drama. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so so right, they say so it doesn't fit the time slot. Oh, we really like it, but we've got another of those very similar in development. Mm. <laughs> there's a few, and there's a few others as well. Okay. But I mean, you, you, you've got to feel some. I mean, it's, it's difficult if you're sitting behind a desk. You you you'll have you know meetings every hour. Another person coming in. Another you pitch, 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 pitch. And the truth is, you're probably only looking for one or two shows. You're just you're waiting for somebody to come in and go <laughs> blow your socks off. So does the commission not have something in mind that he wants to fill that slot? And it really is fair game. Go in. If you knock me out, you've got the the commission. Well, I was thinking to try and knock them out. It doesn't often work, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mean physically knock them out. But I, have, I have done that too, but that's, I'm not, not going to go to that story. I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm a pretty passionate person. I actually do believe if you're, you're very passionate, it, it can be very effective. I mean, I obviously, it, it, you know, it doesn't always work. Though some people are very, very dispassionate, and uh, you know, I, 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 sometimes I have gone into over, 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 you know, over turbocharged, and it's just falling on completely deaf ears. But uh, uh, you know, we just have to keep going. I, I, for example, I just have a little story. I can't show it. I, I, could, have, I could have shown it to you. But I, mm. I had a, an idea about a couple of years ago about doing a series about um, <laughs> a detective show with a talking dog. That was basically it. Uh, <laughs> and, the, uh, and, the, and the pitch of the thing, but you start the show with two detectives and in a, in a very whirlwind uh, opening scene, one of the detectives who is carrying a dog in the, in the midst of a big sort of raid, dies. Uh, the dog survives, and the dog has, the, 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 bloke's, the bloke's gone into the dog, basically. So the dog <laughs> but of course, like Mr. Ed, he only talks to the surviving copper, you know what I mean? So, so the yeah. surviving copper, his mate now is the dog. And he keeps saying, he's talking to me, but no one believes him because <laughs> see, ITV, it's very close at ITV, and they keep knocking it back. <laughs> And I so believed in this that I actually, we did actually shoot a little, I, shoot, I shot a little teaser of the, of the talking dog. Um, and I still haven't sold it. You, you, you can, you, actually, I wrote to a television company recently and said I was prepared to lay down on the A4 naked because they just at least consider a pilot for the same show. He wrote back and said he'd take a meeting to stop that. <laughs> so, we'll see. I don't know. But no, I, I, so you have to... You know, so I, the funny thing is, I actually thought I, I have a, I've got a script for this as well. Actually. I think the script is great. First thing, I think the script is great. I thought it was a no-brainer. I really did. I thought this is completely must-watch telly. I mean, it could be horrible, I guess, but any project could be horrible. You've got to have. You've got to believe what you're going to do is going to be great. Many, many time I'm in the middle of a show, and thought this is a disaster. I mean, you know, I mean, I can tell you hundreds of stories like that. But I mean, just one for example uh, when we were doing the Queen. Uh, when, we, when we hit the cutting room, never mind the shoot, but in the cutting room, we had a very, very long three hour assembly, and Stephen Frears had been off doing other things. We hadn't really looked at the film. He, he didn't want to, anyone to look at it for three months when he did the promoted the Southern films. So we came back and we sat down and watched it together. And it, it was terrible. It was terrible. And Frears just looked at me and said, Oh, well, that's a disaster, isn't it? <laughs> and I thought, Jesus, I've just spent. Seven and a half million pounds of ITV's money on this fucking film. It's a disaster. <laughs> and I went home to my wife and I said, Do you know, My career's over. You, you, you might as well know now, I can tell you that this film is fucking terrible. And there you go, you know, you, you work away, you do, we do. Actually, we reshot quite a lot. We, well, not a lot, but we, 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 we worked, it finally identified what the problem was. And the problem was actually in that film at that time was that Tony Blair's was, story was not working against the Queen's. And at the centre of the film was the Queen, and she hadn't been in the script, strangely. I mean, she hadn't, but she hadn't, but when we... Sorry, is that me? <laughs> oh, here it goes. But anyway, we reshot, at the end, we just got Michael Sheen back and reshot all these key scenes with Blair, having worked out how, how, to, how to put the Queen through the movie, with Blair working to the Queen, in a sense, not to, to but, but so that everything came off the Queen. And, and it, you know, it worked. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's her Majesty ringing me now. Yes. <laughs>
be Sir Andy. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs>